Hello everyone, this is Richard Cespedes, and I wanted to talk about um, spirituality and uh, sexuality. And um, I know I spoke about this in another video about um, asexuals, you know, the spirits are asexual, and things like that. But the thing is, though, is that um, what I want to get at is that they are asexual to an extent, but they um, they still carry um, the characteristics of who they were when they were alive. Like, they still carry... Um, like if a homosexual dies or her heterosexual dies, they they retain those attractions, but to a to a limited extent. Like when they die, they re they retain an attraction of homosexual attraction to other men, homos for homosexuals. But they're basically what they are is that they are homosexual asexual. They're homosexual asexuals. What it is, is that they are still attracted to those people, but they do not act or pursue sexual interaction. They still um, see beauty in the same gender as uh, lesbians or whatever, but they do not act on it because there's no need to act on it when you're in heaven. You, basically, what I think it is that your, your genitalia, if you have any in heaven, I don't know if you do or don't, but it's basically like, it's just, um, it's just a dud what it is, you know, like if you're a female, your vagina doesn't really have no purpose, and if you're a male, your, your penis doesn't have no purpose, I'm sorry to say that, but, you know, it's basically like, your genitalia is basically dead, basically what it is, you're, you're dead, your genitalia is dead, you know, but, um, the thing is though, is what matters is that you're enlightened here in your heart, you know. Um, it's still alive. Your mind and your heart is still alive even after you're dead. And you're still learning. And you're above that. You're above that. But, and the also thing too is that, um, is that when you're a, home, uh, a, a heterosexual that passes away, you basically, um, you're still attracted to females. If you're a male or if you're a female heterosexual, you're still attracted to males. But what you are, just like homosexuals, is that you are a heterosexual asexual. You're a asexual heterosexual when you die. Basically what it is that you're a perfect blend of heterosexual, heterosexuality and asexuality. No matter what sexuality you are, you are a perfect blend of that. So you're balanced. And that you, when, you, when you're there in the afterlife and you observe males and females, you know, you, you can see the beauty in what you used to see when you were uh, alive. But you do not act on it because you're above that and your genitalia is basically not in, not in void. You know, it doesn't even work and there's no point to do it anyway. There's no point for reproduction up there. Um, it's basically just a dud. And the thing is though is that you do not, you, you're attracted but you do not act on it and you do not pursue sexual interaction because there's no big no point. But there's one thing that's a kind of a, a contradiction that makes the universe and the afterlife more malleable and moldable, which is like infinite, you know, like makes it like, um, not so much a contradiction, but just makes it like more fascinating is that when spirits enter the mind of a, of a, of a living relative, they do um, the when they come into the mind, they do act on those old-fashioned, you know, those sexual attractions that they used to have when they were alive. And the thing is, though, is that the mind is a play, uh, another pr a playground within a playground, and that the, re the the relatives have an opportunity because they're entering a living person's mind. So when they enter a living person's mind. They themselves are basically blanketed. They're blanketed in this um, living energy, um, um, kind of uh, like a film, or kind of like a like a blanket of, of this living energy. So basically, when they enter the mind of a living relative or a friend, they basically are able to reenact their desires again. And, and the reason why they do this is because they may be enlightened. But when they interact with the living, or when they're walking amongst the living in the living realm, which some people believe do not exist, there's no earthbound spirits, but there are some, I believe that, um, is that when they're around and earthbound, 
they are um they, they become influenced by the the mundane energy levels the mundane energy levels is the the medium level where the living mostly live you know like the regular kind of perception of everything and that level is what kind of like is with it's intertwined and intermounted in the living body with the with the innate with the innate desires of sexual desire the innate desire of um, of, um, of of attraction of um, the of uh, breaking the Ten Commandments of you know um, gluttony and envy and uh, coveting you know all, all those things which you're not really breaking on what it is you know, you're not really doing anything there are no Ten Commandments but the, the 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 spirits when they when they enter into the brain they get sucked into the fascinations of the living person they they uh, the spirits know and they feel it before they know they know before they know they they, they know that if i entered my father's brain like if a son died and they entered inside the father the living father's brain to to create a dreams of simulation or whatever they know that they're going to be able to you know they know what's going to happen like okay i'm going to be sucked in to the to the desires and the perceptions and the philosophies of this person so i'm going to be sucked into this person's philosophies of the desires and so like um they're gonna almost take control of the spirit and, and, and the spirit knows this and the spirit be, is taken for a ride is what it is when they enter the person's brain so they're able so so in that way when uh just like in the living um, the spirit is able to be taken. I'm sorry to go off a little bit, but let me explain this. Is that when the spirit goes into the living mind to create a dream simulation, they are then blanketed in, the, in this energy of the desires and innate things of the living person. And when they do this, this activates the old chestnut things, the, the old desires of the spirit themselves, because they're entering the living body. So they become they become um what it is is that they become the fascinations the philosophies of the person but what that does that kick starts and that provokes and instigates the spirits kind of old way of you know yeah let's go out. the old way of thinking that they used to be when they were alive yeah let's go out and have a drink yeah let's go out let's go out and find some girls let's go out and get some drugs the spirit they they they, they know this is going to happen but the thing is though the spirit they're just they're, they're, they're enlightened, but at the same time, they're not. They're just, they're, they just want to mess around. Like when you're, when the spirits are a living body, they, they know it's 50 50. You can learn or you can't learn. You can learn or you won't learn nothing. You know, it, it, it just, it's, it's, it's a toss up all the time. But with the spirits, when they enter into the living person's mind, they know that they're going to be taken into the living person's desires and they're going to want those desires because they're in the person's mind. But at the same time, when that happens, it kind of kickstarts their own desires because it kind of provokes like they're, they're, uh, they get into the whirlwind of the enthusiasm of the living person. So they become the living person when they're in the dream, creating this dream. But then when, as they do that, they also kind of, kind of coax themselves. They kind of wake up again. They wake up again. And they're like, yeah, 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 women, women, yeah, drinking, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's let's go out and eat. Yeah, you know, let's go race car driving. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, let's go do it. And that's the thing is, the spirits is that um, they they get they get they get thrown in and, and they're messing around and they get tossed into this whole thing. And the thing is though is that the spirits are um, like like what it is that a, asexually speaking is that um, the spirits do live asexually. They do live enlightened. But when they enter into a living person's mind, they're entering, they're entering basically a whole nother, because each living person is a universe within itself, and the universe of different desires of that living person. And the spirits, being um, very um, eclectic and very, being very infinite and wanting to do and just live and just experience, they want to go into their, and they want to have fun. The spirits, the mundane, the thing is though is that, um, Boredom is the ultimate enemy of the living and the dead. You cannot accept, escape that. That's the ultimate enemy. That's what drives the spirits to create this living simulation, is to due to boredom. Boredom is the ultimate enemy 
of everything, living or dead. And uh, that's why there's a that that's why the living simulation is here. That's why the the playground, the earth, is here, because the spirit is so powerful that they're so bored of being powerful. That they want to create limitations and all this stuff. But other than that, is that um, is that it, you know, I tried to explain it. Is that the spirits are just wacky, enlightened, powerful entities that just want to just go out and just do it all you know, back and forth and around and around and around and around. They're 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 there forever, and they're crazy and got they, they, the truth is they got a screw loose. They got screw loose spirits. They do. They don't want to the mediums, spiritual mediums and the spiritualists. They don't want to admit it. But the spirit, they're crazy. We're crazy. Why are you here? Why are you alive? Because in spirit form, you are enlightened. But if you're so enlightened, why would you need to come back? Ah, you see, that's the thing. But um, basically, um, there are. When you die, you 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 do retain your sexual attractions. But when you're in heaven, you're a homosexual, asexual. When you're a heterosexual and you die. When you're in heaven, you're a heterosexual asexual. But either way, you're a perfect blend of both. You do not act on it. And then only when you enter a person's dream state and their mind do you reenact your old desires. You know? Which is why would you do that at all? Because you want to, because you're a spirit and you're born and you want to experience. Mr. Ricky Cespedes, thank you for watching. Sorry, I went off a little bit, but I have to explain in detail. God bless.